Okay, and the magic machine tells me that I am live. I am live. I am live on Blueberry Wolf Bridge, a.k.a. No Intro RPG, and the game is afoot. And after talking about Noah Patterson's micro chapbook RPG, micro RPG system for so long, I, I might actually play. Though, you know, me being the inelegant mother that I am, have no sort of elaborate, great way to show you how I play. But being on uh, uh, StreamYard, I'm probably, the, the image probably, say, we say hello to Spooky. Spooky, first in the live chat. How you doing, baby? God bless you, Spooky. Thank you, thank you. My, my only, I thought by... So, uh, October 3rd, I would be have a much more Halloween y setup for you for, for people. I thought we would be much more Halloween y out, but I, you know, I just got back. Well, not just got back, but I got back from hey, and du doubling down. Also, we've got our first Transcari. We got hey, 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 hey. Convince CW has been replaced with Stephen Wright. Well, you obviously are not up under your Stephen Wright, or I truly or truly the image quality has gone down on StreamYard and the audio quality probably as well. If I'm sounding like this. I called up StreamYard and said, how much for your internet service? They said, we can get you streaming on 80 different platforms at once with the crystal clear clarity of a young Dolly Parton. I said, how much to look like myself on just one? They said, we'll pay you. I said, no deal. But, but it's an RPG channel, so here we go. Spooky, your white impression is fantastic. Your weight impression is fantastic, RPG joke. Punny. Ooh. Do you know, do you know there was actually, there was actually some jackass, of course, a Satanist. White individual, you would never guess who thought writing a RPG book called White Power would be a delicious pun. Fantastic. Wonderful. Oh, no. Anyway, when speaking of this tux, when cleaning it out, I found, I might have to do this as a giveaway or something, I found one, two, three, four, five... Five um, flyers, little flyers from my old band, Majesty and Misery, from the Batcave, Saturday, October 5th. This had to have been 1990. God, it had to have been 1996. Had to have been 1996. The Habit. I think eventually evolved into Android Lust. So this might actually be. They they were on. Project Sh uh, Shakiri, I think was was the name of of the lead singer. They were a duo called The Habit, and it was a man, it was a guy and a gal. And the gal Shakiri became the more successful of the two, and I think she ended up becoming like kind of a solo act or like a female leader kind of individual, kind of like a female Nine Inch Nails kind of thing called Android Lust. I think was the name of the project on Project Records. So that would be, but they, I guess, technically opened up for us. Or we, I guess we were opened up for the Vampire Love Dolls or whatever. Or it just was like it was a split gig. Um, Scold giveaway. Scold, where I think they were a side project of 
I think they were related to actually. I think they were. I think Scold might have been related to controlled bleeding, um, after a fashion. Like they were like metal industrial. I don't know. But then I also saw this has got to be one of my last ones of these. Uh, Majesty and Misery were the name of the band. It's a sticker. I remember we, I put up one of these stickers in Compact Discworld in Paramus, New Jersey, where I worked. So that's a rare find. So I had to have had this jacket, this after six tuxedo when I must have been playing the gig. And then I found in along with that, I must have had like a whole bunch of like napkins that I must have used as snot rags or whatever, like camel friggin' napkins from the Bat Cave circa 1996. I don't know, like those are vintage, whatever. Use them to make notes on, whatever, for a playthrough. The Black Ink Depths. We also welcome Jonaside. We also we, we also welcome Jonaside. So actually, uh, Jonaside, you don't get a yeah, you get that silver medal. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, the uh, we are like kind of the the I guess we're kind of the unofficial official uh, micro chapbook RPG super fandom YouTube channel over here. Though the only people that really regularly tune into I don't I joke. Uh, to my live streams are my 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 friends who don't play the game. Anyway, that's fine. Uh, but Noah Patterson, founder of the Micro Chat Book RPG system, Micro RPG system, and its many iterations. I'm such a fan. Is like me, a huge fan of Halloween, and is doing a blowout thing for Halloween. The micro RPG system is a rules light system designed for solo play, but can be played uh, co-op or with a group. But it's a fast and furious system. It can be played quick, easy, and on the go. And th that's to be bared in mind when, when we talk about what this project is or what's going on for Halloween with it. And it's, I think, look, it's, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, we talk, so I think here's a, here's a frame of reference. Um, and I think, I think it's a good frame of reference to bear in mind when we talk about the likelihood that I'm going to achieve kind of this goal. I growing up from heavy metal to punk to, to raving to the goth scene always was a fan of, of the horror movies and Halloween and all this stuff. And, you know, over the years, it wasn't a big, like when I was a kid, this wasn't a thing, but like over the years of the recent couple of years, this concept of, of, of watching, of trying to watch 30 movies 30 horror movies during the month of october for halloween became a thing i think i first became aware of it like you know like you know maybe like 2009 or 10 people like in social media like on facebook was when i first became aware of it and i was like i'd always like you know try to do it yeah, go for it let's see if you can do it but like it was like a, it's a heavy commitment you know what i mean because like you know if you're working a full-time job if you got like things to do like I, I try not to watch 10 tons of tv and especially nowadays the majority of of media consumption that i do on an audiovisual basis I, I watch a lot of youtube i don't watch a lot of serialized tv i don't watch a lot of like you know, TV shows and movies. I tend to watch a lot of like YouTube. I tend to watch a lot of internet content. So the last couple of times that I've tried it over the last, you know, couple of times I've, I've done the, I'm going to do it. I've watched, you know, maybe like seven or eight movies and consider myself lucky if I, if I did that. So whatever, where am I going with this? I know Patterson blessed their, Gamer Heart 
the creator of Microtrapic RPG, I guess is, is is made it their intention to release essentially a, a dungeon for their game system a day for the month of October. Meaning that you could, I guess the point is like, you you know, your character, you could, if you wanted to go for the gold, like achieve the ultimate, you know, you know, status as like micro RPG fan of a fan of the century, like uh, play, you know, a dungeon a day of micro RPG. I love micro RPG. I play a lot of it, but the minute you set it up like that, I'm like, honey, listen, the concept of watching a horror movie a day for the month of October, like, you know, I was like, maybe, and then, so you know, it fell short of the goal, and that's fucking watching a movie. You kind of have to do math. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, you get your ass kicked, you know, in some days. The notion that I'm going to 31 days out of 31 days, I'm going to be like, hop, diggy, damn. And at the end of this day, Kalu Kale, Noah Patterson, provide me with the opportunity to go over to Drive Through RPG and download uh, for 99 cents yet another set of fucking uh, monsters and shit to play this. You know, yes. I'm stoked and I'll totally download it. But the notion that me or any other super fan is going to actually play 31. I know there's someone out there that's going to be like, what the hell are you talking about? Of course, I'm going to play 31 games of this. And I'd say to that person, yeah, you're, you're either a fucking bullshitter or you're like fucking like, you know, like this guy, like you're some sort of freaking like on Mars mentat, like some, you know, doodly do person where you're like on some next level and can I hire you to like study you and like hook you up to a machine where you can do like, I don't know, math problems to wizardry where we can figure out some way to monetize it. I don't know, but you're not me. God bless you. God has blessed you for being some sort of alien entity, right? I don't even think Noah Patterson is playing 31 games of this shit. In, in 31 you know what you know what i mean because if you don't roll right you have to understand something a dungeon of micro rpg can't it's like fun for 8 to 80 like yeah you know what i mean like you roll wrong your cat could die in eight minutes fucking sucks to be you huh maybe or maybe not if you're trying to like whoo yeah, I crossed that day off my list i died why are you why are you happy oh shit I died in room one. Why are you psyched about that? Tuesday's done. Kiss my ass. I'm going back to the Facebook group of micro RPG super fans being like, cross Tuesday the third off, you know, Tuesday the friggin' fourth off my list. That's it. Spider Cave of the Damned. I'm done. You didn't, I, my guy died. Noah said that counted. Fuck it. I'm, I'm out. Peace. How you doing, Jerry? How you doing over there? <laughs> I keep on getting healy potions and I can't find a dead end. <laughs> no, there's ways to get, you know, it'll it'll end eventually, you know what I mean? But still, you don't roll right, you can be there for time after time. Call yourself Cindy Lopper. You look and you will find me time after time. You'll be there. You could be there for a minute. And to say nothing, if you like, the first one was $3.99, and it was this. Look, this is good. I like this. It's good. I bought Elephant in the Room. What's up, baby? We say hi. The first one is good. You get, I'll show it to you. And we'll show it to you. I got this. I got the printout. I printed it out. It's not, I like hard copy. It didn't come to Amazon yet. Also, I think, no, himself, themselves, they're a little, they told me they didn't care about pronouns. I call them him, her, whatever. It's great. It's the third. Now, here's the other thing that's spooky. No pun intended. 
I shit you not, brothers and sisters, and everyone in between. I bought the there's the the second edition, the second room dungeon has already been out. I bought it. It disappeared. It disappeared off my friggin'. I downloaded it. I downloaded it into three different places. I downloaded it onto my like drive through RPG as a special, like it has a special like, like program, like desktop program. And it's got like on my hard drive, it has a section. And I printed it out, but I let the printer at home, but it disappeared off two of my things. It's the weirdest thing, but I swear to Jesus, I bought it. It's crazy. It's crazy. Anyway, but whatever. We don't even need to get there because I haven't done the first thing except roll up the character and whatever. I don't even know how far we're going to get. We'll see. But whatever. We'll get to wherever we get to. But, and then I also have the PDF on my computer so I can show it show it to you nicer to, to show you what it is. But anyway, so we'll see. I think what you're going to end up getting is, and I think at the end, they'll, I know what's going to end up happening. Noah's going to collect them all. You're going to end up at the end of October with a hardbound book. That's going to be all of them. So the first one that was released was three ninety nine. And it was thick. Then the second one was 99 cents. So I guarantee you, I'll show you exactly what, what the first one looked like, how it broke down, and I can make a prediction. So here is the first one broke down into basically two sections. You had the Black Ink Depths starter module, which is basically your, and we'll go through it on the PDF so you can see it better is basically like a, a, the, a game. It's basically your, your standard micro RPG style game where you get the starter rules, the a, 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 an interesting kind of character creation, basically a kind of a stripped down character creation, but kind of a unique character creation thing on it. You have a unique um, weapons section and unique item section that I think we're going to go through. And I think what you're going to get, what you're going to see is that basically what it is, is that the first issue, like kind of the first thing that dropped the Black Ink Depth starter module, then has the first dungeon section, which is Garden of the Gargoyles, which is built as kind of outside of like a hospital kind of area, kind of like an uh, outside area of a building. And then the first, then as you go through the depths, the dungeon is kind of what you're being set up through the month of October. And the way the thing goes is your character is basically going to go descending into further into these black ink depths. So um, the, the, the first thing that dropped the black ink depth starter module is kind of basically your intro to the game your basic game and your starter module and then all the other things that drop are kind of like your add-on levels and i think also the conceit is also they're there for the people that don't need the intro maybe just want the dungeons you know um kind of basically people you know who don't you know need a channel like mine to kind of you know hold their hand through micro traffic rpg kind of like basically know the score but i'm going to also tell you that at the price point i kind of get the sense in the scene that like despite the fact that everybody who who collects micro traffic rpg kind of basically already knows the score they basically end up buying the same thing over and over again though 99.9% .9 of the people act that way and then 0.0% of them act as though, hey, why don't you just print the dungeon? Even though I don't know what the economics of scale would that be because if you print, if Noah printed the stuff that people want them to print, like the non-repetitive material, it would just be essentially like, like two pages of like 
a monster chart, that would be it. Like, because that's the only thing that's like really unique to anything. Anyway, let's do this. I think this is the easiest way to do it. Join us out, you get the silver medal. There you go. Make sure you get that in case there's anything missing. So let me see. Let me make sure I do this. Do 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 do. You can share the screen. Window. Oh, 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 I know how to do this. Cancel. I have to do that. Wait, do that. Then I share the screen. Excelsior. There you go. Now we're cooking with grease. Okay, here we go. So here we go. So this is this is the this is the thing. This is the nice the nice graphics. Here we go. This is part of the, his uh, Noah's Gay Realms uh, series. Everything now seems to be uh, Gay Realms with Noah Patterson. I have no I have no I have no opposition to this at all. Though um, my only concern is this: is that with everything being Gay Realms, I think it, it, it's a possible it, it it hinders the product possibly. Um, with with some audiences, not with me or or you potentially, you know, any audience that that I might you know you know appeal to or or, or wanted you know any other gamers that I might talk to in my general audience or or my you know you know you know friends I generally encounter, um, but you know, in the sense this is that um, I don't know, like the the, the gay realms. I, we'll, we'll see. I don't know. It is what it is. You know, I, I just, I just, I don't know if, if Noah Patterson needs to put everything in the gay realms basket. Not that anything needs to, not that and everything doesn't need to be LGBT inclusive or that I have anything, you know, that there's any problem with putting the gay realms, you know, logo or identification on everything, but having everything take place in the gay realms. I don't know if that's, the greatest thing from a marketing perspective, but hey, you know, a creator doesn't need to do everything from a marketing perspective. You know what I mean? I just would like to see this this thing ultimately succeed for all parties involved, including the market, including the the creator. You know, who I stand behind. But whatever they do, I love them. Whoever they choose to love. Happy Halloween introduction: the Black Ink Depths, the Dark Beneath. I don't know. This is also uh, they. You know, Noah still is 100% with the creativity, 100% with fantastic, typos abound. There's still, there's so many typos, it's not even funny. I, you know, this, there's, you know, uh, half of this, we have no numbers. But that's fine, who cares? Happy Halloween introduction, here we go, ba ba ba. I like that. Happy Halloween 2022, and welcome to the official starter booklet for this year's countdown to Halloween from Micro RPG. Each day, of, copyright that, try to copyright that if you're going to do it, do it now. Each day of October, a brand new mini dungeon will be released. Each dungeon may be played on its own or combined with other dungeons from the month. This booklet not only acts as the first dungeon of the month, but will also give you the basics of the micro RPG system if you don't, do not already have them. If you don't already have them, they are everywhere. What you need to play. I will be playing so people know that I consider myself kind of like a, you know, a 1.0, 1.5 micro chapbook RPG, you know, kind of purist. Uh, but uh, for this one, I decided to play full polyhedral, like to go and do it like straight by the book, just like uh, follow the instructions. I'm doing it, you know. Exactly as they say, I'm gonna do like the dice exactly what they do. So it is what it is. Graph paper, the character sheet, the whole nine, yada yada. Core rules. You will need a set of the basic core rules, included in this booklet. You can also use any of the other rule sets, such as the gay realms, the gay realms quick start, an excellent, a very cheap way to, to get uh excellent character uh start because it's a very powerful character start. Uh, the gay realms. The gay realms quick start. The gay realms. The gay realms quick start are a great way 
to 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 uh, get into micro chapbook RPG or micro RPG, or micro RPG, however wants to call it, because uh, they're spoiled. He he spoils the gay realms characters. The gay realms characters get more proficiencies. They get more starting bonuses. They're spoiled. They they're spoiled. He gives them more stuff because he spoils them. It's incredible. Um, there you go. So then the, the so the quick the gay realms quick start is great. Atmosphere says spooky mood with eerie music, dim lighting, candles, Halloween decorations, and atmospheric sounds such as rain, wind, and crackling fire. Or me. The black ink depths, the dark beneath. Ah. People live in the sunlit world they believe to be reality, but there is, unseen by most, an underworld. Oh, fair use, fair use, fair use. Fair use are words that terms that mean things to people in a legal context. It means I can read things that other people have written in an editorial thing. I'm reviewing it. What do these words mean? Noah? I'm critiquing what valuation, but there is unseen by most an underworld. No, well, that's it. That, I'd slaughter it. Hold on, wait, let me do it right. You drink water, uh huh. So I constantly get scared. Noah Patterson, I'm also a narcissistic, self obsessed asshole. Noah Patterson. So I always talk about this. I always like I, I can never keep the man, the this individual's personal business out of my out of my reviews. And I always talk about he like they are always like their bio is always shifting. They always like are adding new things to their bio. Not they're adding new things. I'm sure their bio is 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 actually their stuff. Like it's real stuff, but autistic. Now that it's everything, there's a there's an, an emphasis on autism. And I, I, um, I'm like, I, so I'm a narcissistic self-obsessed person. I'm like, do you think that they, they started putting more stuff about autism? Cause, cause they're, they're sending me a subtle message to back off and stop being loud and scary. I guess I think that I, I think that people change their bios because I'm, so, I'm making such an impact. As 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 a minor league YouTube person that occasionally talks about their stuff, occasionally talks about their stuff. They're the only person I talk about. I don't really think that. I think it. I think it. I do think it. But then I say, Ben, that's crazy. That that's that's impossible to believe. Maybe they think about you at night and they find you slightly attractive. Slightly attractive. You need to get a haircut, Ben. But they don't change their bio because of you. That'd be ridiculous. I don't really think they find me attractive. I would like them to find me attractive. I'd like everyone to find me attractive. I'm kidding. I live in a sunlight world I believe to be reality, but there is unseen by me, an underworld, a place that is just as real, but not as brightly lit. Reality, the black ink depths. It is always there waiting for me to enter, waiting to enter me and corrupt me. The black ink depths is an ethereal realm that exists just outside our own. Most people who live in the worlds and dimensions of the gay realms have no concept of this existence. Like, why? You know, like, you know what I mean? Like, why is this place in the gay realms? Like, it's Halloween. I get it. Like, the gay realms could be like this place, the Black Ink Depths. Like, why isn't the Black Ink Depths touching the gay realms, touching the micro chapbook RPG places, touching the, you know, Everything's gay realms now. That's fine. I have no problem. Listen, I consider myself like orientation queer at this point. My dad's dead. Fuck him. You know what I mean? I don't care. You know what I mean? Trans women are women. I, I'm not worried about it. I don't give a fuck. I don't get involved in those conversations. I don't worry about Cartesian, you know, questions about who I am anymore. I just don't even worry about it. So I don't care. Gay realm straight for me. I don't care. I'm on the East Coast. I don't. Uh, you know what I mean. 
I do not care. But there's certain people that this is going to be like. Are we opening up doors or are we closing them? I don't know. But anyway, it doesn't even matter. Those who do discover this underbelly of reality rarely return. It may look like our world, like places we know and recognize, but it isn't. It's bleak and bleak and cursed and forever to remain in its inky darkness. Inky. Multi-level dungeon. Oh, I like that. We'll get back to you, tattoo of that. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. The black ink depths are not only a strange reflection of our own world, but also a multi-level dungeon. Wait, what? Each dungeon put out in October counts as either a standalone dungeon, if played alone, or a new level to the mega dungeon that is the black ink depths. A world of ever-changing shadows and nightmares. You never know what horrors might appear on the next level of the dungeon. Well, actually, you do. It'd be one, it'd be one of 12 things. You can only hope that you eventually find a gateway back to the normal world. But will you be the same by the time you return? Probably not. Inky gateways. No pun intended. So inky. Very few know how to reach the black ink depths. However, Many speculate is through only the darkest of objects, cursed objects, that one may enter this realm. One such object is a book of long forgotten lore written in black blood ink. The blood taken from those possessed by demons. Thankfully, the books known to exist are locked away in vaults for the cursed and paranormal items. Away from the hands and prying eyes of the curious. However, this won't protect you. Not during this grim autumn season. I don't want to read the whole thing. That'd be like, anyway. So then you get to roll to see how you got here. My guy got here through number 14, black blood ballpoint pen. I decided to roll a character based on, on the rules contained in here. And uh, so we go through, then they'll give you rules for like, uh, you can, if you, if you if you find if you're gonna take a character that you already got that you already made like from another thing or if you're gonna generate a new guy you'd roll a dude a, or gal whatever you'd roll a d20 to find out how you got to the inky black ink depths so you'd roll a d20 and you'd find one of these things this is cool it helps you with like story building and, and lore building i got a black blood ballpoint pen and i made a notation of it on my character sheet with my character sheet can you see me too am i on screen too hold on wait oh yeah there i'm in the corner yeah well not quite corner if you see me hey we say hello to tim frey what's going on how you doing tim what's up baby so then uh i got uh and I'll, I'll tell you about my guy when I do it. So then character creation, then we do this. So you could you could take a character that you already made in one of your other games, or you can bring them over here through one of those, through rolling on the table, or just rolling that table to figure out who a new guy you made ended up here. Now, this is cool. Uh, so if you just started off with this game, this would just be a $3.99 buy-in. Um, uh, you could download it off drive through RPG. And uh, download and print out the PDF or whatever. Just keep it on your on your computer, or whatever. Um, you begin the game by determining your four main sets. I chose to do the random method by rolling the D three. This is a D six with the results halved and rounded up. You roll it's a six sided die, have the results and round them up. I did the random the random roll of the the stats because technically I could have ended up with you know, more points allocated or 
I could have used the traditional way of having seven points that I allocated between that I chose to allocate between the four stats. Okay. I chose the random method because technically I could have ended up with more than seven points, you know, in the different amongst the various, you know, overall, though I wouldn't have ended up with a four in any given stat. Um, unfortunately, uh, it didn't pan out that way. I, you know, I ended up with, you know, kind of rolling poorly. I ended up with a three in strength, a one in dexterity, a two in wits and a one in charisma. Very, you know, kind of very poor, but that's the, that's the luck of the, of the role. And I just went with it. I just went with it. Um, then he explains the main stats, strength, dexterity, wits, and charisma. We've gone over this in past episodes of mine. I don't want to keep on doing that every single time uh, we do the system or else we'll be dead. Uh, step two is the core character type world. This deviates, this character creation method deviates slightly from other systems. Next, you will choose which core type your character is and thus where they came from before getting sucked willingly or unwillingly into the black ink depths. Each grants plus one bonus to one main stat. Add this now to the stat in question. If there's a world character type or genre type not listed, you would like your character to be from, feel free to create it yourself. Remember, no matter where your character is coming from, they're entering a dark horror themed realm that mirrors their own in some way. Now, this is cool because what this means is that basically you have an opportunity here with this with this system to kind of basically have an ad hoc character creation system that's really open for a micro chat book or micro RPG system. So this is basically, you know, replaces your what like kind of like your um uh, what am I thinking? Like this replaces uh, race. Kind of uh, picking race in um uh your um standard uh, fantasy setting like right because this adds just the, the the stat bonus so you could be a heroic knight warrior if you want to come from like a fantasy setting or a steampunk mechanic adding dexterity so you basically come up with like your your character who it was and you know if you thought it was a zombie survivor if you added plus one in strength you just basically come up with like a background of, of character who you are and then think what stat that character would be the most proficient at or not don't want to use the word proficiency because that'll create a conflict in terms but they'd be good at and then you add you add a bonus plus one to that stat so in my case i came up with my character being a seasoned spacefaring soldier for hire i envisioned them kind of being you know, not so much a cell sword or a mercenary, like an individual, like um, bounty hunter, but like more like being part of like a unit or a troop or, you know, that was like sold, you know, as, you know, you know, you know, as, you know, as such, like, you know, as part of like a corporation or such. And in fact, when it came to the kind of the backstory that I ended up developing, I ended up creating a character that I, a, a male character about the age of 32 that I that I kind of based on. I thought of uh, let me go through this core character type world. Next, you will choose which core type your character is and thus where they came from before getting sucked. So that we just thought of who they are. Now we're thinking of where they came from, where they came from before getting sucked willingly or unwillingly into the black ink depths. Wait, what is this? Oh no, that, that that's this. So that's the main stat. That explained that they said. I'm sorry, I'm going backwards. Okay, place one of the main stats. Oh, that's okay. So I just did that. Okay, I went backwards. I'm sorry. Uh, this is the Ink Shadow Hunter ability. Next, you will choose an Ink Shadow Hunter ability. This is an area of skill of training that makes you proficient in one main stat. Uh, the proficiency will be explained. This is the proficiency is when you know when we roll. In this uh, system, it's a roll under system. If we're trying to achieve like a, a melee hit, we're rolling in strength. If we have a strength stat of four, we're trying to hit four or under. If we're proficient in strength, we're rolling two dice, two d6. 
So we're taking the better of the two results. So proficiency, if we're proficient at a stat, we're rolling the two dice. So here's photographic memory. If we were proficiency, we're calling photographic memory. That gives us a proficiency in wits. I chose a proficiency in charisma so that I would be able to re-roll bravery uh, uh, chances, which are necessary in the in the fighting stages. Don't worry if, if that doesn't make sense to you. So I took the natural bravery uh, Ink Shadow Hunter ability for charisma, and I noted that proficiency on my character sheet. Okay, now when it came for my kind of my story, might as well stop here and go into the kind of the lore here. Then we get into the substats that we've been over. Uh, none of this really matters for us now. We, we've 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 gone over this. Well, let's do this here. Then I'll do this because this is this is germane. Car step five: character background. Uh, now using what you know about your character, both from their previous core world, how they ended up in the black ink depths, et cetera, flesh out some of the details, gender and preferred pronouns. What is your gender and pronouns? The chosen gender doesn't have to match their birth gender and may even play a part in their story. Romantic preferences. Noah Patterson is like lovelorn and lost. They're married. If they're still married, they're married. They are romance obsessed. Everything with the gay realm. So everything is fucking romance, romance. Everything is a, every world they have has a romantic sub uh, supplement with dating rules and how to rule role. And if you if you go into a dungeon three times with somebody and you're sexually attracted to them and they're sexually attracted to you. And every other Tuesday, you do a roll D6 and you both get a three. Then, you know, you can get married. It's like Skyrim. You know, you can have a baby with them. You know, it's, everything is romance, romance, romance. So romantic preferences and genders and family and upbringing. All that shit is always in there for Noah. I, I could give a goddamn about my role-playing game people's romantic preferences because I'm divorced, you know what I mean? The bloom has fallen off the rose for romance. I could give to fuck my, you know, romance is as complicated as whatever. I, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I, you know, so when it came down to it, here's what, so now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop sharing this and then take a moment to go like that. Hey, hey, Pragmagic. Yes, absolutely, you can. Absolutely, you can. We say hello to Pragmagic and tell you, yes, you can. Be a 1940 noir Western magical gunslinger. You can be, as long as you accept the fact that you will be sucked into a horrific, dark, grim world where it's horrible. Anyway, so when coming up, when rolling these stats and then coming up, with this and going through this character creation methodology and looking at these things for gender preference and romance. I thought about these things and I looked at those and I was like, ah, and I, and even as, as kind of a reaction to not wanting to worry about what my character's romantic inclinations were. I first thought about, what about an android character who's asexual? And then I thought about well, what about like a replicant who doesn't care or who's somehow genderless or somehow like this. And then I thought about like Roy Batty and then also the, I forget his name, but the, the kind of the dim because my character ended up with very low stats in wits and charisma, so I thought of not Roy Batty in in uh, a Blade Runner, but his his kind of dim associate. I'm I'm, for, I'm forgetting his name. Um, who like he was doing? He's the guy who's getting being, being given the initial void comp test in the beginning. You know the turtle's on its back. Why is it on its back? You know the one who gives the line. Wake up. It's time to die. That guy who like, like, so I had a vision of a guy who like, you know, like wouldn't really care about like romantic entanglements. Cause like I said, he's a seasoned spacefaring soldier for hire. Like it just, you know, and then I thought of this idea of like why he's been sucked into the black ink depths. 
And this notion that when I rolled for how he got sucked in there, he got sucked in by this black blood ballpoint pen. So I had this vision of an individual who kind of came from a kind of like Dune type intergalactic civilization where he was kind of a, like a replicant, like clone warrior. And he was part of some sort of like industrialized, you know, warrior class where whatever romantic needs that he had were kind of taken care of by some sort of industrialized, maybe cybernetic kind of pleasure unit that he was hooked up to at, at, for X amount of period of time, like a day when necessary or monthly when necessary. And that was just kind of, you know, the deal. And I had this notion of like what had happened to him or how he got sucked into the black ink death. So this is where the role playing aspect of it came over for me. And I came up with this thing that I thought was kind of, that I fell in love with, the concept that I fell in love with that I thought was kind of ingenious and kind of cool. And it was this, that the, the, the corporation that he kind of was created by, employed by, worked for, owned by, that they had kind of worked into their system this notion that like, you know, Roy Batty had kind of undergone this process in, in uh, I can't want to call it 1984 for some reason. And, well, I think it has to do with this notion of awakening, this, this notion of kind of, of, of people coming conscious to systems, uh, systems that were like Neo in the Matrix. You know, like the notions that like Roy Batty became aware of the fact that this is fucked up, that I'm a replicant, I don't want to die. And he led this this group of people. He became a leader to this group of, of other replicants to say, "We're going to go to Earth. We're going to find Tyrell, and we're going to find out how to fucking stop this process of us dying in five years or eight years, or whatever the case may be." Right? He's going to he protested. He woke up to the fact that there was some sort of fucking game afoot that was fucking stopping him, you know, from existing, and he was, you know, going to acting in opposition to that. Neo in awakening to the matrix was acting in opposition to the control of the matrix, you know, whatever, you know, and going back to my, my characters who I ended up naming, naming cadence humor, a 32 year old male, um, this notion that even in his sort of dim way, this, there was this notion that these, these replicant soldiers would be subject to becoming aware of the fact that him like Roy Batty, like, um, um, Rachel would become aware of the fact that the memories that he had been implanted in that were put there to, because a human brain required memories to hold it in some sort of stability or stasis weren't actually his memories that these you know, fantasies that he was experiencing in the pleasure dome or whatever weren't actually, you know, real memories like that. He, and even though he would do so or be in some sort of fumbling, stupid way that whatever happened to him, though, it wasn't some sort of intellectual breakthrough was some sort of friggin' mistake or some sort of thing that just kind of statistically happens to some people of his ilk or kind. He, unfortunately it happened to him and he started to like reject the programming or whatever. And that built into this system is these men, women, or whatever, these clone warriors or soldiers or whatever, in all instances, whether they're working as scullery maids or housekeeping attendants or as soldiers or as gardeners or whatever, have to occasionally sign contracts or sign paperwork. And when they do so with these pens, these pens can sense whether or not they are subject to this like waking disease or whatever. And if they are, they get sucked into this fucking black ink dimension. And the reason that this does so this happens is because this corporation, look, here's what I wrote down. Here's my, my, my gameplay notes. Cause this is Halloween, right? And this is the black ink dimensions. Okay. Replicant post woke. Jacked via auto pen release, subject to company subcontract with elder gods. 
or outer gods, meaning that his company corporation that owned him essentially had a contract with like fucking Yog Sagath or whatever, the fucking Cthulhu gods or whatever, that they basically had figured out like some fucking 2000 years ago, some fucking executive at the corporation figured out, oh yeah, you know, these fucking replicants, every fucking you know, 25th thousandth one is going to fucking figure out that they're fucking part of this clone army. You know what we're going to do? They only count as fucking two thirds of a soul, according to these elder gods, but whatever, two thirds of a soul is better than nothing. Let's do this. Let's fucking have an automatic process that can sense when they wake and then automatically jack them to the fucking Cthulhu gods as a sacrifice. We'll make two thirds of a soul on each one and blah, 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 blah. And we'll do this, that, and the other thing. And they'll be happy. The Cthulhu gods will be. And so that's what fucking happened to this guy, this poor fucking poor bastard. He fucking, it was fucking day number 99, whatever, of his fucking detail. And they were like, Cadence Humor. He was like, what? They were like, sign this. He was like, okay. He goes over to sign it. Fucking, he picks up the fucking pen. And the pen goes, oh, you're fucking jacked. And he fucking, he fucking goes into the fucking, you know, he goes into the fucking hell realm. Because fuck if he knows. And he's not too bright, so he's fucking, as far as he's concerned, he just shows up there. And he's not too bright, and all he fucking knows is fucking smashing things with a fucking thing anyway. So he shows up, it's another fucking place to smash things, because he ain't too smart. But he's naturally brave, that's why he's got this proficiency in charisma. He doesn't have the proficiency in charisma because he's a natural leader, he has the proficiency in charisma because he's naturally brave. Essentially. Which might just be a result of being naturally kind of stupid. But, so I've got a character, I've got a stats, i got a backstory. He had six gold, which was exactly how much it cost to get one Shadow Demon Short Sword, which causes D6 damage. So when he rolls for damage, he's going to get a D6. His highest stat is Strength, which is four. He had a three, but he got a plus one from his class. His Dexterity is one, but it doesn't matter because he doesn't have a melee weapon. He's not planning on using one. His wits are two, which means he's probably going to blow up every single trap he comes across, which means he's probably going to be blowing himself up a lot, and he's probably not going to survive very long. His charisma is one. He's supposed to be naturally brave, but his charisma is one. So he's going to get to re-roll his... We're going to get to re-roll our charisma rolls, but we're going to need to re-roll our charisma rolls. We'll be down willpower like nobody's business. But let's get into going back to the thing, because what we're going to see here is this. I'm going to tell you this, folks. So this is what, what I'm going to show you now. So what I'm going to show you now is this. Survival equipment, purchasing items. All at once your character is complete, you can use the shadow currency you rolled up to purchase equipment for your character. You want at least one weapon before entering your first dungeon. Unarmed characters only ever deal one damage in combat without adding your damage bonus. We don't have the damage bonus because we haven't leveled up yet. Throughout the month of October, in between dungeon levels, in the black ink depths, you'll be allowed to come back to this section... So you'll need the starter module because I don't know if the if the next ones are going to have uh, these this equipment. Um, you'll be able to allow to come back to the section and purchase more equipment with shadow currency you've earned during the gameplay. The types of equipment you'll be able to buy includes weapons. So here are the weapons, million ranged. Okay, now let's look. So I'm going to tell you this. So what I notice is this. The, the equipment is very expensive. I'll tell you this. So I'll tell you what. This, this game is scaled differently in the weapons and the equipment. So Noah obviously is a game designer. There's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of emphasis. You don't want, if you want to play this game, I think if you want to play this game as, as intended, you want to play with the stuff that's here. Because I think that it's balanced. It's definitely balanced differently. The cost starts off cheap, but these the cheap weapons do nothing. D2 damage, you're doing crap. You're doing nothing. And the things get expensive, real expensive, real quick. The armor 
is real expensive. Real expensive compared to the equipment you see in a normal uh, micro trap book RPG. Real expensive. So we're either seeing a kind of level creep where Noah is tailoring this to an audience of already kind of higher level players in his community. Be careful of that because, or we're seeing that we are, what I'm seeing, what I thought I saw when I saw this was a, a more of a kind of a video game emphasis on consumables that he wants the game designer wants to see people running around with less ability to hide behind armor and more scurrying around. Like, cause look at the cost on, on the healing items one, but heals five health. So when I see that the items are healing a lot more, I think like 20, health and wheel but for three just on three and then you're getting a five gold item that's healing you to max health and max will a 10 gold item that heals you up to both um also adrenaline shot and rusty syringe steroid shot and rusty syringe black blood injection there are there's a lot of hospital stuff going on so it could be another thing it could be it could be silent hill and it could be um, something else, but I also think I also when I saw those, I also thought I detected a kind of a bloodborne influence. We got the gameplay basics, so I think that you're that you're seeing we're going to see more. You're going to want to be seeing more hanging out with consumables and hoping that you're generating more consumables than you are um, hiding behind armor because uh, that armor is expensive. Shadow moves. Shadow moves willpower can be spent on shadow moves. These are impressive feats of physical and mental prowess that are sure to help you in dire straits. Shadow moves always cost five will to use. Will is like your mental health. Shadow will automatically pass any stat test. If you're not, I mean, look, if this stuff doesn't mean anything to you, you don't play this game. Um, game light for uh, D6 battle rounds to try, blah, blah, blah. it is what it is. If you play, you play the luck dice for any stat test. You could choose to also roll the luck dice. The luck dice is a D12 and determines how well you succeed or task or how badly you fail at it. This is something that when I talked about this, when I talked about um, the Academy of Mr. Hog or whatever, I think I kind of shit on this a little bit. Um, I think I. I talked about it as being kind of a, 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 a rule or a game mechanic that was being thrust in, maybe not necessarily, but uh, on second thought, I think it's kind of, it could be useful in a press your luck situation. If you are down and in desperate straits, you could add the luck dice when you knew it was a, you needed a Hail Mary pass you down to one health and you have one healing item, you could run, you could throw that luck dice on there. And knowing that, you know, if you get a shitty roll, you're dead anyway. But if you get a miracle, good luck, and you get uh, exceptional success, you know, double the result, you know what I mean? Or do something cool like that. I don't know. And knowing that if you're on, look at me, if you're playing solo, it's up to you to be the honest DM. If you're playing solo, it's up to you to be righteous. So, for example, in that scenario that I ran, that I just ran through you and I do the luck dice, and the luck dice basically says this. You're trying to add an extra mechanic of chance. Right? An extra element to, depending on the results of the 12-sided dice, putting some flavor on your previous role. So you took that healing item and instead of just determining whether or not 
it works or doesn't work. Putting the spin on it to say, is it an exceptional success, a normal success, or partial success? Or, on the other hand, a horrific failure, a normal failure, and only partial failure. It's up to you to play it to the bone and to play it honest. If I take that, if I add that luck dice on, knowing that I was down to one health, and I was doing it as a Hail Mary pass, knowing I'm doing this luck dice, knowing that <clears throat> I'm doing it because if I roll the exceptional success, it'll save my bacon and I'm fucked anyway. Well, then if I get the horrific failure, come on, man. I got it. I got to call that healing item poison. Come on. You know what I mean? Or I got, you know what I mean? Cause you got it. You know what I mean? Or you know what I mean? You're only cheating yourself. You're only cheating yourself. It's like when I did when I did the random the random rolls for the stats. We've all been there. You're doing the random rolls for the stats for your character. You say to yourself, "I'm gonna do this to the fuck. I'm gonna do this like fucking Dave Arneson, man. I'm gonna do it real true to the bone. I'm gonna let fly this dice and whatever it is, man." That's it. And then you fucking, you, you have your fucking dream. You're fucking set. You're going to be fucking warrior gulag, gigos, warrior king, smashy hammer, grab, fucking kill, bitch, whatever guy. And you roll strength of fucking one. Oh, fucking, it slipped. That was practice. Uh, uh, uh. What happened to I was gone fucking Dave Arneson. I'm fucking, I'm pure fucking. Da- You're going to write down the one. Or are you going to lie to yourself in the universe? Like a fucking Noah Patterson. Ah, so I'm joking around. Teasing. Am I even sharing a screen? I'm not even sharing a screen, or am, I, or am I? I'm just looking at you guys like douchebags. I'm not even sharing a screen. This whole time I thought I was sharing a screen. When was I going to figure out I wasn't sharing the screen? Motherfuck, that entire time I thought I was sharing a screen. That entire time I thought, now we have to do the whole thing again. The entire time, I th- from where to where, the entire time I thought I would, from shadow moves to this whole fucking thing. I thought, no, I, we didn't go over this. I, we didn't go over any of that shit. I mean, I, I, we, I, I wasn't going to go over all that stuff with you. But because I wasn't going to go over anything with you. But shadow moves. I started talking about shadow moves. For shit, I started talking about shadow moves. I sure as shit thought I was talking. When did I think that? When did I think that I'd gone back to that? Ah, oh, shit. Weapons. I did. Was I sharing a screen for weapons? When did I? What? Holy crap! I have no idea when I thought I was sharing a screen, let alone when I stopped sharing a screen. God damn it, mothers! I sure as crap thought I was sharing the screen when I was showing you the consumables and stuff. Mother God, you son. Oh, man alive. Holy jeez. Wow. Wow. Yikes. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Oh, man. Welcome to the dungeon. Welcome to the dungeon. It's a fun game. Man alive, Jesus! They're they're man alive. They're man alive in here. Micro RPG is a dungeon crawling game, really? Wow! Is it? Shh. I've been playing it as a castle building adventure. Oh Jesus Christ! I've been playing on, where you randomly generate and encounter dungeon rooms. That's I don't think that's true. What? 
The flow touch creation of gameplay works as follows. Start. Okay, so we know this way. Okay. 752. Okay, here we go. You guys ready? How long, have been How long have I been doing this? I said, let's play, but I lied. Said I loved you, but I lied. One hour and four minutes into this. And I got to tell you, folks, I have five people watching me live. None of them play Micro Chapbook RPG. Not a damn one. Four people watching me live. Not a damn one. Anyway. At eight o'clock, I have a phone call to make. So I'll probably, I'll, I'll probably, well, let's see, what, let's see what we go. But I do have, I have a character. I don't have any healing items, but I've got. So wait, here was it? So I'll put this to the side. Here we go. Let's see what do I need. Roll D20. Normally roll D12, but we're going to roll D20 in this one. The number rolled is the number of squares the current room is composed of. Drawn a room of that many squares. Yeah, we do that. I know how to do that. Roll Generate doors. All right. Roll D3. D6 have and roll round up. This is the number of doors in the current room. This includes the door used to enter the room, thus allowing for dead ends in the dungeon. This is an evolution in the rules of micro chapbook RPG, micro RPG. It used to be that it would not include the door you used to enter the room, okay? That would preclude the generation of dead ends. So this new rule allows the creation of dead ends, which limits, naturally limits the creation of uh, the size of the dungeons, okay? So that's a new rule, a new evolution of the rules. So technically, if you wanted to, now I'm going to play it by the book, so I'm going to use this rule as it is, but you know, know that you could always use the either rule if you wanted to. Play in your own way. Generating room type, roll D6 on the current dungeon's room type chart. And this one would be this thing. We would either get a black canopy, black canopy, rotting black vines and leaves have grown over the roof in this area, making it pitch black. Plus one on all, all attack rolls, unless you have a lantern. Or we get the garden chest. There's an iron chest that you almost didn't notice because it is so overgrown with vines. Make a strength test to cut away the vines. If you pass, roll on the treasures table. Or we could encounter a thorn vine patch. Plus one to all dexterity rolls here. That won't matter to us because we're not using a dexterity weapon, but... Every failed dexterity roll inflicts one uh, H of uh, one H damage, one hit point of damage. Okay, we don't need to worry about that unless we have to do the dexterity roll for some other reason. Uh, number four would be a poison apple tree. Those apples are so so tempting. Make a wits roll to resist. My wits are two. I'll, I'll probably end up eating a couple of those. If you fail, you want one and become poisoned, weakened for D6. Weakened is the new version of kind of uh, of having like no, uh, having all your willpower drained. Uh, if we're weakened, um, there's the rules on a uh, weekend. If, if we're weakened, if we're proficient in something like we're proficient in charisma, we will be rolling the two D6 and taking the better of the results. If we're weakened, we have to uh, roll just one. So we roll as if we're not proficient. And I believe when we're weakened, we roll 2d6 for everything, but then we have to take the worst of the results. I think it's like reverse proficiency. Let me see if I'm correct. So like I said, I'm an old school player. So this weakened system is like the new thing as opposed to being having no willpower when you had no willpower you just took every roll um minus one or plus one which sucks because it's a roll under system oh, i can just look at it here what am i doing then you can see it too what am i doing said i loved you but i lied did you do 
Fuck your mother in her thighs. Okay, here we go. Gameplay basics. Willpower. After any failed test, you can choose to spend one willpower to reroll the result. Willpower can also be spent to reroll damage rolls as well, both for your own damage and enemy damage. However, be cautious with your willpower. If you ever reach zero willpower, you become weakened. Weekend. Being weakened is the opposite of having proficiency. Ha! Huh. When you are weak, all stat rolls are made with two d6 instead of the usual single d6. You will keep the higher of the two dice, discarding the other dice result. If you are usually proficient in the stat being tested, weakness simply makes, makes you roll the test like it were a normal stat with a single d6. The weakened condition goes away as soon as you regain at least one willpower. Multiple game elements in addition to willpower may cause weakness. Weak conditions never stack. You're always, always either weakened or not weakened. Okay, here we go. That's fine. Okay. Okay, okay. Or there's also the acid fountain. A stone, a stone fount spits acid out instead of water. All health damage taken here gains plus D3. That sucks. You could just, like, fucking die there. Stone bench is number six. Rest here to regain plus D3 health. That cool. That's cool. Like I said, we're going to re read through those. So it's like, I guess you do there to get plus D3 health. But are there still enemies there? I guess you would do. So when do you when do you rest there? So like this, I said, like, you always have to read through these rules. Because, like, I love Noah. But, like, you read through them. But it's like, okay. So stone bench is that's the room type. But here's how gameplay works, right? Check this out. You get into the room. You generate the room. The number rolled is the number of squares the current room is composed of. Drawn the number in a room of that many squares, connecting the squares in a room, blah, blah, blah. Generate the doors. Okay. Hold on. You generate the doors, Okay. Then you generate the room type. Okay, so then we generate the room type. And let's say we generate the room type of six, which is the stone bench where you rest here to gain plus D3 health, okay? But then we generate the monsters. Roll in the current dungeon scenario monsters or enemy chart, blah, blah, blah. Do this once for each currently participating party member, blah, blah, blah. Fight the monsters now. Monsters generating rules may be slightly different based on the dungeon scenario. or uh, Reward. Once all monsters are defeated, roll for the treasure in the most basic format, blah, 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 blah. But the point is this. Okay, so if there's a stone bench where I, where I rest where you gain D3 health, but there's monsters in there, oh, I have to figure out, do I rest there after the monsters or before the monsters, right? It doesn't explicitly say. Now, I got no problem at this point. I've been playing microchapic RPG and I've been playing RPGs, you know, for a long time. So I have no problem with like being like figuring out being like, okay, well, that's a problem. It's not explicitly stated. So I got to figure it out. But when I first started playing, you know, micro RPG, I would be like, I'd get there and I, would, I, I wouldn't do it ahead of time. And so I'd get there, I'd get to a thing like that. And I'd be like, son of a bitch. I'm like, well, well what do I do? And I'd be like, and it would take, it would take, it would affect my quote unquote immersion. It would take me out of the moment. I'd have to think. Blah. Well, then sometimes I would be like, oh, rest here to regain D3 health. And I'd do it. And then I would leave the room. And then I'd be like, but wait. Or then there's rules when you go back into a room. Then you sometimes roll to re-roll to find out if there's monsters in there again. But then it's like, okay, well, do I do I get to rest again? It doesn't explicitly say. Now, I'm going to say, yeah, I can. If the stone bench allows you to gain D3 health there, it does. Now, there's some people that would have a problem with this. It comes down to personal preference. Because if I go and have two rooms next to each other. See, now, here's the thing. Micro chapbook RPG, micro RPG will play out like a video game more like more so in many ways than a lot of traditional dungeons and dragons scenarios i actually like that about the system you might actually have if i have a i don't know if i've got a dungeon here like a map out here 
Ah, here we go. Here's another map from like a different game. You're not gonna be able to see shit. Okay, okay here we go. Okay, so, so like let's say it's, let's say okay, let's say I have like room like all right, here we go. Let's say I have like room like let's say room number four over here is got the bench that I can get D3 health off of. And room number three is a, it, room number three is immediately adjacent to it. Every time, okay, so I've cleared number four of enemies and I've cleared number three of enemies. Number four has the bench where every time I go to it, I can rest up to D health, D3 health. I know that according to the rules of the game, every time I go back into a room that's been cleared of monsters, I have to roll D6. And I think like on a roll of like six or whatever, new monsters appear. Okay. So I say to myself, I'm low on health or whatever, but I say that and I've got no healing items, but I say to myself, I concoct the, 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 the following scenario that is very similar to what I might do in a game, in a video game, but it's not saying that I would do like in Dungeons and Dragons, but it's saying that I would do in a video game where you might have like, I would do this. Absolutely. I would do this in like Legend of Zelda, like where you have like the healing fairy, like right. You know, I would just go back and forth between room number three and four. Right, because statistically, it's unlikely that I'm going to get new monsters when I go back and forth between three and four. And if I do, it's more than likely that I might get like cheese tastically small monsters. I might actually end up generating gold. You can grind in this game. If I'm going back between three and four, especially if number four I know is a stone bench, because once I've generated the room, once the stone bench that generates health, D3 health is in number four, it's in number four. So I can go back and forth and I can keep on healing. And in fact, once I've got that healing room, I might do like boop, 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 boop. I might piss people off. I'm going to be like that jerk that like got the highest score in Berserk by just by figuring out that you could just go in like, you know what I mean? Like go in the four rooms in a row like this over. We say hello to Freebird. What's going on, baby? Like it says, like, that's not playing Berserk. Yeah, it is. You don't like it might not be playing the way you like to, but it it's playing berserk. You know, I would just go back and forth. But for some people, that would destroy the immersion of it because that's like what that makes no sense. But for me, that's like a video game mechanic, right? That the that the character would repopulate, that the enemy would repopulate every time you go back in. But courses for courses, raised on video games, raised on 8-bit. I don't give a fuck. Do you know what I mean? That works for me, but it might not work for some people. But you'd want to figure that out beforehand. You'd want to figure out what your rule is, what works for you. Because I'll tell you, the way that these games are written and the amount of space, I don't hold it against Noah. I don't hold it against the, the, the writer at all because the amount of space that they have to work in, and I think the speed with which they're trying to get this material out, I don't think you can write. Look, I mean, look, if you're trying to write room types, I don't think you're going to be able to get, like, you know, you know, cover like every anal retentive scenario. Now, what we mean by this is this. And in the event that you've used the room more than four times in a row, you have to move on at least two rooms beyond before you can go back. That would be cheating. Ben. He mentioned me by name because he knows I'm a narcissist. Oh man, there's a thousand three ways to die here. There's a lot of traps. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. My guy's gonna die. I'm just gonna die. This guy's gonna die. I don't know. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. And there's treasures. And I've we might encounter some. I gotta be totally honest with you though. Reading through here. I got to be honest with you, because occasionally this will happen where there'll be, like, references to something. Like, I encountered this in another. Like, I, I, like, occasionally, 
on two or three occasions, I've I've encountered rules in Noah Patterson's micro chat book, micro RPGs things where I've been like, I missed something. I don't know where that's coming from. Okay, so here we go. Dungeon tables. Here, let's go back to the uh, to the to the PDF. Jeremy monsters. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay. Once all monsters are defeated, roll for the treasure. The most blah, 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 blah. Choose the door to roll through. Blah, blah, blah. We know how to do that. Ah! Love her. Into Hell's Ma. Monsters in combat. We've done this. Will damage. Health damage, life force. Okay, so it's, uh, yeah, so they, okay, so they, they change the rules a little bit for will damage the amount of damage they deal to your current willpower, score and psychic or bravery based combat, health damage, life force, max monsters allowed. This is the max number of this enemy that is allowed to appear in a single room. Difficulty modifier. This is new for this system. This number allows this number measures how dangerous the enemy is. Add this number to your bravery attack and escape tests against this monster. Okay. Armor rating. Some enemies have natural armor or wear armor. The armor score is subtracted from your damage rolls to a minimum of one damage. Okay. Attack type. Most enemies without an attack designation only attack in the melee step of, step of combat. However, some enemies are given attack types for ranged. This enemy attacks in ranged combat instead of melee. Ranged and melee. This enemy attacks in both ranged and melee combat. Psychic, this enemy deals psychic damage in the bravery step. This means if your willpower is at zero, the enemy deals its its willpower damage as if it was health damage instead. Yikes. Okay, area, blah, blah, blah. Health damage is divided among all party members present. We're just playing by ourselves, so that doesn't matter. Oh, shoot, I have to make a phone call. Hold on one second, guys.
Okay, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Very important phone call. Had to make it. Had to make it. Jonasite, I was told by a player in DD, if you ain't cheating, Dungeons & Dragons, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Also, she asked, all I want is an unfair advantage. Is that wrong? Hmm. I don't know. Not for me to judge. Um, where am I? Where am I? Uh, where am I? Uh, where am I? <laughs> there you go. Da, da 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 Rewards. Okay, here we go. Combat. Initiative. We know that. <gasps> where am I doing? We don't want to go over the basic rules. We've already been over the basic rules so many times. Between dungeon levels. Yes. Yes. Here we go. So, Garden of the Gargoyles. This brings us to the titular first dungeon of the Halloween season for micro RPG of the Black Ink Depths, the Garden of the Gargoyles. Within the Black Ink Depths, there are many areas that appear to be outdoors. However, these areas are just as confined and as claustrophobic as any cramped dungeon room. In fact, some of the worst monsters lurk here. The Garden of Gargoyles is a vast hedge maze garden that is overlooked by countless eerie stone gargoyles with glowing red eyes. The garden acts as a welcome to a towering asylum hospital that looms just in the distance, somehow lit up in hues of blood red. Dungeon details. The Garden of Gargoyles is an outdoor hedge maze dungeon that sits under a sky of slate blackness. In fact, all the outdoor skies and black ink depths feel like staring into a black hole. Starless, moonless, and shapeless. It is said those who spend too long outside looking up go insane. The garden itself is made up of hedges and stone walls with thorny patches and many trellis arches and gates. Dungeon goals. Many have died wandering the ever-changing maze that is the Garden of the Gargoyles. Your goal is to find the proper route through the garden. After clearing each room, make a wits roll to navigate the dungeon. If you pass, roll 2d12 and subtract the number of rooms you've cleared thus far. If the result is zero or less, the next room is the gate out that is guarded by an ifrit. That would be the boss. Right? So that's a, so. there's a special boss generating mechanic here. Now, I just want to make sure I, I understand it. That's the dungeon boss. Okay. Okay. After clearing each room, make a wits roll to navigate the dungeon. So after you clear the room, you make a wits roll. So I'd have to roll a two or less. So I have a two out of six chance of, of passing. Uh, roll a two. Okay. Okay. If you pass, roll a 2d12. That's two 12-sided dice. And subtract the number of rooms you've cleared thus far. If the result is zero or less, the next room is the gate out that is guarded by an Efreet. Okay, so you can either... I guess you could either... Okay, so like normally it's... Normally, you can you you roll the dungeon monsters, and normally the way it roll works is this: is that you roll for the the monsters, you roll a six sided dice, and you get either one through five a normal monster, or if you get the six, you get the boss. But you can't get the boss unless you've either encountered all of the other monsters at least one time, or you've gotten a special uh, rule satisfied and here we just got the special rule so I just got to make sure I keep track of that also I have I know I have one 12 sided dice die but do I have two 12 sided die I don't know about that let's see 
Hold on. What is this? Those are those are ten sided die. That's an eight sided die. That's a four sided die. Hold on. That's a twenty sided die. We know that. Hold on. Oh. There's the twelve sided die. I need another one of those. Do I have another die around here? Hold on. Now I gotta go looking for shit. Hold on. Bear with me. I might have it around here somewhere. Hold on. Because I got like various things where there's dice. You know what I mean? It's one of these things. Like, ah, dice. Oh, I got all this dice around here. Now I got dice. Oh, there's dice over here. There's dice over there. And then all of a sudden you turn around. Where's all the dice? Oh, man, where's the dice? Where'd you put the dice? Ah, oh, I had it over here. I had it over there. Now where's all the dice? Ah, oh, I put it somewhere. Where'd you put it? I don't know. <laughs> Fuck it. No idea where it went. Jesus. Fuck it, we're playing Tunnels and Trolls. Fuck that guy. Hold on. Masters Atlas, World Crafting Tiles. There's a chance, though. No. Hold on. I got another six-headed dice. But that's not what I'm looking for. What? Oh, come on. Ah! Hey, hey, hey! Hey, hey! Hey, 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 you got to be kidding me. 10, 11, 12, 12, 12, 12 sided dice. But look, you have no idea. Hold on. You fuckers, you son of a bitch. Check this out, sluts. This 12 sided die, this one. Is from my my original red box, my red box D and D set from like, but it's like the like the basic the basic D and D set that I had from like the the red box from like mine is from like I must have gotten it for like 1985. So it must be like the 1983 like I don't know like what printing it is, but whatever. But it's the one you get. And it's the thing you bought, you uh, like it's chewed by a dog. Oh, God, it's got like crud in it. But it's the one you get, and it, like I have like it's you, it's the one you put the white crayon in to get the uh, the numbers. That's the original white crayon from the. That I filled in with it. So we got two D12s. So we got we got that. So we can do that. So fuck you, I guess. Nice. Okay. All right. So what do I got to do? Now I got to keep track of that fucking mechanic. So every time I fuck a mother, what do I got to do? If I pet uh, every, after clearing a room, make a witch roll to navigate the dungeon. If I pass, I roll two D12 and subtract the number of rooms I've cleared so far. The result is zero or less. We're going to do like one room. Okay, we'll try and get through one room. Jonaside says, I have a couple of die from my first D&D box, but only two. Well, you're one up on me because I think I have one. But hey, listen, we got the one. We got the one. But you know what I have? I've got like, I found I have the the like the two or three books. I have the books. So we got a character sheet. I've got my notebook. Someone give me something to write on. I got a pencil. You pen. 
The rules clearly call for pencil. Pencil. Ticonderoga, number two. Jonasite, I got to ask, with that jacket, did you go to court today? Yeah, I wore this to court. <laughs> As a defendant, I plead guilty of being fly. Say what? Ow. This whole court is out of order. of failing to recognize, say what? Yeah, you're gonna need to stop saying that, sir. That was my client. I'm gonna need you to stop saying that. No, 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 I, I think I think they're liking it. I think, the, I think the jury's warming up. I don't think they're warming up to you, man. No, 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 trust me, trust me. Number three is really warming up to me. That old white lady, she's not warming up to you. She's warming up to me. <laughs> Say what? Put on the shirt. Roll on D6. What do I get? Tiny stone winged rat. Say what? <laughs> What's this? What did I get? What's this? Some, some correspondence here from the. the some correspondence here from the author of Biker Chapbook RPG, Noah Patterson, from his legal counsel. What? What is this? Cease and desist letter. Kindly stop mentioning my client or his product. Cease now and forevermore ever mentioning them again. Say what? Fuck you. No way, dude. Uh-uh. Tonight, some freestyle jazz with Cosmic Corey. Nice. No. Say what? No way. Uh-uh. Roll and a loss. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Do I remember how to play this game after playing for 10,000 years? I don't think so. I doubt it. What? Substat Shadow? Oh, that's their currency. Oh my god, look at this. Dungeons completed. How many dungeons? I'm supposed to complete 31 dungeons in 31 days? Honey? Honey. Meanwhile, if we bought 31 dungeons in 31 days, we would be spending how many? The first one was four bucks. And then if it's a dollar each day afterwards... We could adopt a small child in Ethiopia, or we couldn't like what? Pay for disorder in the court. This is crazy. Anyway, let's do this thing. I think I know what I'm doing. Where's my D20? <laughs> Hold on. This is gross. Hold on. Okay, my guy, Cadence Humor, 32-year-old male, replicant, seasoned, spacefaring, soldier for hire, grabbed, post-wake up, jacked via auto pen release, subject to company subcontract with the Outer Gods, as per my intro. Armed only with a Shadow Demon Short Sword that does D6 damage. No armor, no consumables, no nothing. 25 max health, 23 will, proficiency in charisma. Four strength, one dexterity, two wits, one charisma. 
let's let's try and play this game. So the first thing I'm going to do. So uh, let's see how we're going to do this. I want to see. So hold on. Hmm. I'll give you guys a better angle. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Wait, I'm going to try and do something. Hold on. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out like a way that I can do the um, do this where I can like where you can see what I'm doing like as far as like rolling the dice and like making the map and uh, like drawing and shit and like make it like look kind of cool but like without like taking too much time to to set things up where we sacrifice ah Christ Almighty. And also, I don't want to like accidentally, inadvertently, like you know, dox myself by like showing like my like my wallet with my like Discover card or showing my crotch. You know what I mean? That would not be ideal. I mean, for me, for you, it might be great. My Diners Club card has been doxed. They saw everything. They saw my Diners Club card, my Swedish penis pop. It's really my bag, baby. I don't think you can see anything. Here we go. But, you know, I saw that so many times before. And of course, it'll be like a joke because I'll be like, I'll draw it. And I'll be like, it'll be like backwards to me. And I'll be like, spend five hours being like, so if I draw it this way, then okay, no, it's upside down to you. Okay, no, Catwoman is upside down. Okay, that doesn't work. Okay. Okay, so you also my. So my VPN pen, so that's great. That's wonderful. Okay, so let's see if this works. Yes, great. And no, but what's fantastic is actually if you guys knew the state of solo RPG YouTube, this is actually like high finance by mail. This is actually wonderful. And actually, like, there's actually like a scene where people are like, actually, I like it better this way. So we're going to roll a D20. I think that's the rule, right? To get our first um, room. And if I sound like I don't know what I'm doing, I actually play this game all the time, but I'm old school, so I would use a uh, 2d6. Eighteen? That's a huge-ass room. That's why I would do 2d6. This is nuts. Eighteen? That's like a room the size of my fucking dick. Are you serious? Is it supposed to be that big? They said it. Noah? Are you serious? Okay. But I guess that'll be good because it'll be like... And then I'm going to be like, want to draw it all fancy. Da, da, da. Let me just count. Oh, I'll just count. Wait, hold on. One, two, three. Wait. One, two, three. And that's so incredibly boring. Let's make it a big long room of. I see it's all the way over there. There you go. Well, you enter into like a big entryway, like a. Big room. Anyway. Because it's 9 and 9. It's 18, right? I can add. I went to school. And then, uh, what should we call it? Then, then we do the number of rooms. Am I constantly going to be looking at these rules? You know, the only reason I'm looking at these rules constantly is because I'm on, is because I'm doing this live. If I wasn't doing this, if I wasn't on YouTube, like doing this live, I'd be doing this all in my head. I have these rules basically memorized, but because I'm in front of an audience, I'm so paranoid that I'm going to get these, these wrong. This is why I'm doing this to myself. And I haven't been like, um, how do you do this? How do you do the rooms? Yes. It's D three. Of course it's D three to do the number of rooms. 
I mean, the number of doors. See, I'm already doing it to myself. I'm like, the number of doors? Oh, my God. This is terrible. I'm, I'm, I'm freaking out. This is why. Can I tell you something, guys? Honestly, can I tell you something, guys? The reason that we're going to see me do an existential freakout crisis, and I'll tell you why. I am terrified of math and getting math wrong. So even though the math in this game is like, you know, like not that big a deal. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this thing apart. Because there's like, I'm just going to get to the things I need. i just pull the thing apart, the things I need. Because I'm like so paranoid about it. I'm going to be like, <gasps> like I'll like literally things like, um, Nine plus nine is 18, right? Right? It's that. Because you see people like fuck these rules like all the time. Oh, here we go. I just need the rules out. I'm like, fuck shadow moves. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're not doing anything now. It's so deep. It's what am I doing? What am I balking on? What am I trying to do? Roll the. This is what I'm balking on. Balking on the fucking rooms, of uh, doors. Roll D three. D six half and round it up. Duh. And I'm not gonna have to figure out what the rooms, what the doors do until until we go through them. So it doesn't even matter. That's two doors. That's awesome. Actually, watch this. This is gonna be cool. Does that work? Do that. I'm actually going to mark this with an E for the entrance because this is like the first room. Okay. And these are our two doors. We're not going to figure them out. We're not going to worry about what they are until, until we, until we, um, this is, this includes the door you used to enter the room. This is for dead ends in the dungeon. I'm, if... and that, so it would just be, Oh, you know, we could do it like this. Then I would do, oh, man. See that the reason I did it like that is because in the regular game it wouldn't include the 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 room that we. I don't want it to include the entrance way. Fuck it, but it's, I said I would play it by the book, so I will. So then, there's only one door we could take out. We only have one choice of egress. Because I don't know. Well, actually, see, I think this is actually an accident of how these rules were written because this will be the dungeon entrance. I don't know. I just think I just think it's a way that the way that the 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 thing was. Oh, okay, darling, whatever. We'll just make that the entrance. That's the way we came in. Whatever, dude. So that's the one we came in. And then immediately opposite will be the egress that we'll eventually test to see what it is after we do the monsters. Okay, so here's where we came into the, the first room garden area. And this will be the exit that we're eventually going to leave it in. And now we're going to figure out what monsters are in here. Oh, no, we have to figure out what room type it is. So now we're going to figure out what room type it is by rolling the D6 again. Woo! And we get a six. What room type is it? Da -da 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 -da. We consult our room type thing. Our room chart. Oh, man. This is it. I love this about these games is that it's all flipping through, flipping through. What am I doing? Oh, room type. Six. Hey! You'll never guess. It's six. The stone bench. Where we rest here to regain D3 health. But we can't gain D3 health because we're at max health. You can't gain more than max health. 
So we're already at, my character is already at, where's my character sheet? Oh, Christ. See, this is the thing with me. I'm a very disorganized guy. I don't need the weapons and armor because I'm not going to use those. Ah, fiddly fool. Your papers are all flowing around me like a schmoodoo. Yeah. Ah, things are rolling around me. Yay. Um, stop. Hammer time. This piece of paper I need. Readily available to me. That's all I need is this piece of paper readily available to me. This is what I need readily available to me. Like this. This is all I need. Here. This. Like this. Right next to me and right next to you. Like this. Here, watch. Look. Those are the rules. So those will be like there. For easy consultation. I'll put these less necessary rules over to the side here. And this is my character sheet. Be like that. Until I discover that whatever. So now I generate the monsters. Roll in the current dungeon scenario monster. Okay, so the, here we go. Oh, no. So this is, okay, I got to mark down what room this is. I just have that room thing. What do I do with it? Wait, hold. Wait, what? I just had it. I was waiting. What did he comment about it? What the heck? Oh, here it is. I put it on these things. Why? Why did I do that? Oh, here we go. Ah. So I'm going to mark it room type at six. Stone B. Plus D3H. I'll, I'll reckon I'll remember that. Okay. Healing bench. Let me show you my, my so, so here you go. My health on my character sheets currently Max is 25. It's currently it's 25. My willpower is 23. Wow. Let's generate our monsters. Okay, you ready? You ready? You ready? Of course you're ready. Free bird. I need to do some work. Catch you later. Not a problem. We'll be right here. We'll wait. It's cool. And I'm down to two viewers. The minute I started playing, I got down to two viewers. Oh, man. So sad. Actually, you know what I should do? I should probably stop the stream and turn it into, into a different stream. Should I, should I break it? Should I break it Break it into another stream? Let me do that. Let me, break, let me end the broadcast and then start it as another stream. So I'm going to end this stream... And then I'm going to actually do the, the actual first round of play in the second stream. Would that make, does that make sense? Because this is already at two hours, right? So that, so that we, we, we start, or should I just, here, let me do that. Let me do that. Let me do that. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, I love you. I love you. I love you. If nobody told you they loved you today, somebody just did that, that, that guy is friggin' cable guy in Negro. Let me get my, um, I've got the, hold on. Oh. I'll do the, I'll do a, a, a tarot card of the day for this stream. So we get come on come on come on come on come on big money big money big money no whammies no whammies and we get 
Five of Wands. Oh my God. So good. So good. So telling. So telling. So telling. Five, the number of, of man, the number of woman, the number of a human being at play in the world. Whenever I see fives, I'm always thinking of, of a person, of a person, a person in action. And wands, you know, this is this is the suit of action. This is the primal force, the primal life energy. Um, so, you know, to, to, to see this is to remember this. This is play. When we see things in the world, the interactions of, of mankind against mankind, so many times we can see these, these things and it can appear as combat. It can appear as war. It can appear as conflict. We must remember, essentially, it's play. There's a way to understand all of these things, man versus dragon, man versus man, holy combat, as cops and robbers, as... Games Without Frontiers as play, as the merriment of children. It's all shadows and dust. It seems so important if you live your life in the frame of the human frame. But if you know and understand the truth of the global and universal scales that we know to be the real scales of existence, these things mean nothing. These actions and these activities, we can see them for what they are. Play. Mishigas. Silliness, rolls of the dice, and scratches on the game board. I'll see you in a few. I'm going to start this up as another stream and just play play a couple of a, a room or two of this of this RPG and see what we get. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit.